And we say hello to former Giants great Harry Carson, Hall of Famer. Great to see you. You're, of course, part of our Giants coverage here on MSG. And congratulations is in order because you were recently inducted into the, into the New Jersey Sports Hall of Fame. Congrats on that. I appreciate it. Um, uh, I'm, I'm in about 14 or 15 Halls of Fames. Um, <laughs> That's because you're big time. Well, I'm not going to say big time. Maybe they're, they're at this point where... Uh, they don't have anybody else to recognize. <laughs> <laughs> well, for Giants this season, obviously, and Giants fans look forward to Christmas, look forward to maybe what's going to happen after the season mm -hmm. uh, with this team now, where they are. But this Monday night, looking forward to seeing Eli Manning back under center, possibly uh, with Daniel Jones having the injury. What does it mean for the Giants? I mean, there was this expectation that he was probably going to get one more start, I would think, before mm -hmm. this was over. But what are the expectations that you have for him Monday night? Well, I, I think it's... I mean, it's really good to see Eli preparing to play another game. <clears throat> I think he probably thought that was going to be it for him because Daniel Jones had been playing relatively well. And, and quite frankly, I, I felt like the team needed a spark when Daniel Jones was inserted into the lineup. Now, I, I think they could benefit nicely from Eli coming back. And I'm glad they didn't trade him to... Jacksonville or Kansas City or wherever else he could have been, you know, traded to. I'm glad he's still a giant. And, um, you know, it, it gives the Giants at least an opportunity on Monday night against the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. The one bad thing is Philadelphia has a dossier on Eli, and they know that he's not going to run the football. So the defenders are going to be pinning their ears back, and they're going to be coming after him. So hopefully, you know, the Giants will put Eli in situations where he has a, a moving pocket or he's rolling right or left, but not necessarily just sitting in the pocket because those guys down in Philadelphia are very good at collapsing the pocket. Interesting. You know, it's been a rough year, obviously, for the Giants. Yeah. Need to get them back to prominence. I'm a huge Giant fan. What do you think is I their think we main? Need to get all New York teams. I, I'm back with to you. I you agree. I <laughs> agree. Everybody. Only the Islanders are carrying the torch right now. Yeah. What do you think is their biggest need next year moving forward? They're going to have a high draft pick. Where should they go? What direction? Well, personally, I would go for an edge rusher. Mm -hmm. You know, probably the best one that you, they can find to uh, put immediate pressure on opposing quarterbacks. Uh, I think after that, maybe a dominant offensive lineman mm -hmm. um, who can be a road grader and, and open some holes for Saquon. Um, they've got pretty good talent there now, mm -hmm. but that talent is still developing. And um, I think, you know, maybe with another good draft and another year under its belt, I think the Giants will be hopefully back to prominence. You know, I always think the giant identity is defense, right? As you're talking about an edge, edge rusher, how important that was. And of course you, right? Yeah. You being here makes you think of, like, again, those the great giant defenses. And when they're great, it's because they have great defense. Mm -hmm. And another friend of the show is, is Carl Banks, a big Knicks fan. And we talk with him a lot. He's been here. And he's one of 25 semifinalists now for yeah. uh, the a Hall of Fame. Yeah. So talk about his credentials and whether he should get in. I got my fingers crossed for Carl. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the problem with Carl is not Carl Banks, it's Lawrence Taylor. You know, when you talk about giant linebackers, Lawrence Taylor sucks the air out of everybody's balloon. And so when you talk about, you know, Carl, and it's long overdue for him to receive recognition, he was, he was such a dominant player. I mean, if you go back to Super Bowl XXI, he was the guy who was making all the tackles. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was a little jealous because <laughs> nobody was running my way, and I kept hearing... Banks on the tackle, <laughs> Banks on the tackle. And I, I was like, come on, Carl. Let, you know, just ease up. Let me get my name spit, called. Spit you know? it out a little bit. No, but he is a guy who, uh, tremendous talent, very much disciplined, very understated. You're not going to get a whole lot of sacks and all of that stuff from him. He's just a solid player and an outstanding teammate. Uh, one of the reasons why I left when I left with the Giants was... I knew that myself and George uh, Martin were leaving the team in a good position with strong leadership with Carl Banks and Pepper Johnson. And uh, those guys have never really disappointed me. They played the game the way that they saw others play the game. 
like a Lawrence or like a me or, you know, other players who've played for the giant defense. And so, you know, I, I, I think that, you know, Lawrence uh, or Carl really deserves the recognition. I hope he gets in, but who knows? I, I mean, it took me eight tries to get in. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with this being Carl's um, first time as a, um, uh, I, I guess, semi-finalist, uh, hopefully things will work out for him. Now, you're a huge advocate for safety of football in the game mm-hmm. and with everything that's going on with head injuries and CT. Why are you such an advocate for just getting that right and making sure the players are safe nowadays? Well, because, you know, when I left football, I knew that I might have to have my knee replaced at some point Mm -hmm. down the line. I knew that my hip might need to be replaced at some point. But then I was also diagnosed two years after I left football with post-concussion syndrome. Mm -hmm. So I was having these these issues while I was playing, but also once my career ended. And I knew that if I and many, so many other players had problems with our knees and ankles and shoulders and hips and all of that. I'm pretty, I was pretty much sure that there are so many other guys dealing with uh, the long-term effects of concussions Mm -hmm. because that was what uh, I was dealing with after I was diagnosed. It was deemed to be uh, the concussions that I sustained a good two years after I left football. So I figured that, you know, there are so many other players who are probably dealing with the same issues. And so I'm one of those people that I've always tried to be an advocate for uh, my teammates and guys who I've played with and against. And so I've been very vocal. I've been very public about talking about traumatic brain injury and concussions. And, you know, I sit in a very unique Uh, position because there are so many guys who are older than me who I've sat and I've watched deteriorate because of dementia, Alzheimer's Mm -hmm. and and Lou Gehrig's disease. And now I'm looking at guys who I played with and against and they're dealing with the same issues. And nobody can tell me that it's not from concussions and traumatic brain injuries that they've sustained during their term of of playing the game. Mm -hmm. And so I've shared with people and and I've tried to be as honest and as open as I can be that football is not for everybody and, you know, head injuries are a part of the game, whether it's shoulders or hips or whatever. Those neurological issues are there for everybody to see. And you have to understand that you know you're going to get hurt physically there's a strong possibility that you could get hurt physically but nobody really talks about the neurological damage that could be sure. sustained as a result of playing the game and so i've you know i've tried to be as forthright as, as possible talking about this issue Harry, we can't thank you enough for stopping by oh great my pleasure you. All right, right. have a great holiday season. Thank you, you too. And uh, we'll look forward to your work on our coverage, Giants coverage here on MSG.